Now let's continue with our proof. We had uh, right now have shown that C is the least upper bound of the set T. We have to show that C is actually an element of T and C equals to B, and that will conclude our proof. Now to show that C is an element, to show that term C is an element of T, what we do is use principles one and two again. Principle one says there exists a delta, a little positive number, such that F is bounded on uh, on on C minus delta to C. Okay, so that's and then you consider the fact that since since C is the least upper bound, there exists um, a T that's very, very close to C, as close as you want. There exists a T where T belongs to the, the, in, the interval. In fact, T might, if T might even equal to C, there's no, nothing that says T can't be equal to C. It doesn't have to just approach it and not get there. You can actually get there. Now, if T equals to C, then obviously C will be is a member of T. But what if we're not so lucky and T doesn't equal to C? Now, if T is not C, uh, we're going to still argue it because then, then F is bounded on F is still bounded from from A to bounded on A to A to T because that's the definition of T. I mean the de yes that uh, F is going to be bounded on this interval, and C minus delta C. So F is bounded on these two intervals, and remember T is inside this interval, which means the two intervals are touching or overlapping. That that means in, which means the f is bounded in the whole thing. Okay, the union of this, this, these two intervals. I'm now quoting principle two, bounded on the whole thing, on from a all the way to c, and that by definition means c is an element of t. That's the first part. The second part we're proving is very similar. Again, we will use principles one and two, which to next part to show that. C equal to B. Let's, but this time we will prove by contradiction. Assume C is less than B. Now, if C is less than B, then we have a certain delta. Again, by principle rule number one, there exists a delta such that at where F is bounded. There exists a delta where f is bounded on this interval on um, from c from c all the way to c plus delta. Delta is just a very small number. And f is also bounded from the previous part of proof. We said that f is bounded from a to c. We already said that f is also bounded from a to c. Which that means by principle number two, we can then combine these two intervals to say that f is bounded from a all the way to uh, c plus delta. But that would mean c plus delta is an element of t because that's the definition of element of t is things that are that f is bounded on, and that's not that's a contradiction because. Because uh, C is the least upper bound of T. It cannot possibly get any bigger. So this causes a contradiction, which uh, concludes the proof. However, this isn't the end of proving this thing, though, because we will show in the next video another way of proving this theorem, a totally different way that is actually shorter than what we have been doing. So let's watch the next video.